Welcome to Touch Technology Review today. We're gonna to be taking a look at my process for creating videos here on this YouTube channel. I'll talk to you a little bit about the prep work required in putting together a video, some of the equipment that I use, and then in the final section of the video, I'll take you through an edit using Filmora, which is an amazing video editing application that you can download for Mac and Windows and even on your mobile devices. Links in the description box below. Before we get on with that demonstration, a quick discussion about what it takes to put together a YouTube video. First of all, there is the preparation work that you need to undergo in order to be ready for your video. And that's gonna involve obviously a little bit of research on your topic, following that up with some preparation notes. This could be a full script, or it could even be just in bullet point form. And that's gonna give you the material that you need to cover on the day of recording. So if you go in well prepared with that knowledge in mind, it's gonna make the process, the whole recording process much more comfortable, more flowing, and you're gonna get what you want out of your mind on video much more succinctly in a much shorter space of time. So the more prep work you do, the better off you're gonna be. The next thing to consider is the equipment. Now, if you've only got an iPhone available, you can just use that iPhone. They're capable of recording full HD and even 4K videos now, so the quality is gonna be fine. But you might wanna consider some add-on equipment, including a tripod, so that you can lock your shot off and have a stable face-to-camera recording, such as the one that you're viewing now. I'm actually using a Canon EOS R, which is my recording camera of choice. This records in both 4K and full HD, and it gives me the best quality. I feel superior to an iPhone, and that's situated about two meters away on a Manfrotto tripod. The next thing to consider is your lighting. Lighting is particularly important when you're recording indoors, especially if you have low light rooms, if you don't have large open windows. So you might wanna get some kind of LED light panel. I've got one situated about one meter away to the left, it's my key light on occasions where I have more space to record in or where I've got a lot more time for the setup. I'll often use a fill light on the other side for more balanced lighting. And sometimes I'll even use a backlight to add more depth to the scene. So with regards to your lighting, it really does depend on your budget and how much space and how much time you've got to set up the lighting. Next up is the audio. If you are placing your camera more than one meter away, it becomes even more important that you use an external microphone. The further away your camera is from the recording source, the more room noise and echo is going to be introduced and you're going to lack clarity in that audio recording. So for me, I tend to use this Rode NT1 Studio Condenser Microphone. This is a really high quality studio mic. It's situated about 30 centimeters away, and this produces a very clean sound that I find probably is the best sound that I've experienced with a microphone. I plug it into a Zoom H6 audio recorder. I've got the recording of the audio on a separate SD card. I'll bring that into my video editor with the video file and synchronize it and match it up in post-production. Now, if you don't wanna go through that process, you can just plug the microphone directly into your camera and get the recording that way, provided you have the right cables and connections. So audio is a really important part of your recording. Once you've completed the video, the next thing you need to do is to collate all that data and put it onto your hard drive ready for the edit. Now, all of my equipment uses SD cards, so I tend to put them onto my D drive and my computer over here, and then import them directly into the video editor. So once you've done that, the final stage is the video edit itself. And today we're gonna to be using Filmora to edit the video. I'll take you through all of the basic features of the program to give you an idea of how capable this is as a video editor. And following that, I'll produce some additional videos in the future on some of the advanced features and functionality. Let's get started. So I've just downloaded the latest version of Wondershare Filmora 11. I'm going to click on the application icon, which is on the desktop to open up the program. Upon doing so, we start with the new project interface where you can go in and create your project or open existing projects. Before creating the new project, you need to determine the aspect ratio of your video. 16 by nine is the most common aspect ratio and it's the one that we use here on YouTube. The great thing about Filmora is that it gives you many other options for publishing on alternate social media platforms, be it the square format, one by one aspect ratio for Instagram, a nine by 16 vertical format, 
portrait mode, again, for Instagram or even YouTube shorts. And there's a standard 4.3, which is the old format you used to see on TVs, a 3.4 business format, and a 21 by 9 cinema aspect ratio for those of you looking to create a feature film or just to get that extra cinematic look. But as I mentioned earlier, we are producing a YouTube video, so I'm going to click on the new project. Just below that are some quick shortcuts into auto reframe, auto beat sync, PC screen recording and AI portrait modes, which are all features of the Filmora Wondershare application. And these take you straight into those particular features of the app. But we're gonna go with the new project option. Once you do that, you'll arrive at the main project interface. The screen is divided into three main sections. There's the media window on the left-hand corner. There's the media preview window on the top right. And then below that is the timeline. To start any project, you will need to import your media. And I've already downloaded all of my assets from my camera, along with some graphic images onto the D drive of my computer. And this ensures that I have them all in one place, very easy to find. And by using a D drive, I find that it helps speed up the application in general. And also being one terabyte in size, I can be assured that I'm not gonna run out of storage space at any time. To import media into the project, you can click here to import media, or you can use the drop down menu under the file menu and click on import media files. Navigate to the folder where your media is stored and click on the open option. And all those files will now be imported into the media window. If you'd like to add new media at any time during the project, simply click on the import media icon and add the additional files. To get started, I'm gonna drag the face to camera video onto the timeline. To do that, simply pick it up and drag it down onto the timeline. You'll get an option to match the media to the project frame rate, which is 30 frames per second, or keep the original project settings. Now for YouTube, you could use either 30 frames per second or 25. There's really not much of a difference there at all. 30 frames per second is more of a video look and feel, whereas 25 frames per second tends to be a little bit more cinematic. If you've shot with the GoPro at 60 frames per second, you could choose to change it over to 60 frames per second for the more action type look and feel. So I'll select the 30 frames per second option. And now we have my face to camera video appear on the main timeline. Click on the play button icon or use the scroll wheel to navigate through the footage to determine whether you'd like to use it all or make any cuts in the footage. Now supposing I wanted to add some B-roll footage over the top at any point, I can grab the marker on the timeline, move it to that particular point. Then I could click on the scissor icon to make my cut or use control B on the keyboard. And if I move the scroller further along, I could then go to the second point in the timeline, control B, and I could select that clip and hit the delete button and cut that footage out. And that's how you would create your basic edit now I'm going to add some B-roll footage. To do that, you can simply pick it up and drag it onto the timeline onto a second layer just above my existing footage. Or if you want more control over the particular aspect of the footage you wanna bring in, you can click on the footage in the media window, double click on it so that it appears in the right hand side as a preview. You can use the playhead to go to a particular in and out point. So let's start here as our in point. And then you could use the in marker to mark the in point, scroll further along, and then use the mark out marker. And you've now got this section of video that you've isolated from all of that footage. And you can simply click on that window and drag it onto the timeline so that you don't have to worry about cutting it on the timeline. You've already selected the scene that you want from that video clip. So that's gonna save you a lot of time when you're adding B-roll footage. So if we take a look at that, I'll just drag this along to this point where I made that first cut. Before we get into the edit, let's talk about my pro. Once I've done my basic prep work, including the script itself. Okay, so that looks good, but it's a little bit boring. Why not add a transition? There's a couple of ways we can add transitions. 
we could do it with the overlay footage as we have it, or we could actually insert it in between. So I'm gonna move the footage on the base layer and then drag that B-roll footage so that it fits in between those two clips. And now we're going to go to the transitions tab and you can see there's a huge range of transitions that you can add to really spice up your project and make it so much more interesting. So let's start with one of these transitions at the top here. To apply a transition, simply grab it from the transitions window and drag it in between the two clips. Place the timeline marker just before the transition, tap on the space bar, or click on the play button to preview your transition. Let's talk about my process and... That's a really cool transition. Let's try another one. Let's talk about my process and... Let's talk about my process and... These are really cool transitions that you'll find are quite unique. And in fact, there's so many more of these than you'll find on most standard free or entry level video editors. Before we get into the edit, let's talk about my... Get into the edit, let's talk about my... Before we get into the edit, let's talk about my... we get into the edit, let's talk about my process. Before we get into the edit, let's talk about my process. Get into the edit, let's talk about my process. Get into the edit, let's talk about my process. Getting back onto our video edit, I'll go to our media tab and I'll go to another point in the timeline. We'll now click on the stock media option. The stock media option gives you access to a whole bunch of video downloads. They appear to be more like animated GIFs. They can be a lot of fun to play with and really good for creating meme type videos. And that's all integrated within the application. Next up is the audio tab, and this is where you can add music to your project. Once you've made your selection, just drag it down to the timeline and then you can pull the volume lever up and down in order to reduce the volume or increase it so that it mixes in well with your existing footage. Now, if you haven't noticed it already, there's also a volume adjustment option on your video clips and that appears within the video itself and you can just pull the lever up and down in order to get the volume right. Another great thing about this app is the amount of title options you have available. A title allows you to place text on the screen. Most of them are in the lower thirds position, but there's also some full screen or side screen options available, which look really cool. I'll just drag a few of these on for you to have a look at. Aperture, so that I get a little bit of background blur, which helps. So that's a quick look at titles. Next, we're gonna take a look at the effects. To do that, I'm just gonna to go to the media library and drag some sample footage that I shot on my GoPro whilst walking throughout Melbourne. Let's just grab a little clip here. Maybe this scene here, going through a rail underpass. Mark the in point, mark the out point, and then drag it onto the timeline and Let's go to the effects tab and try some of these effects.
You can apply more than one effect if you keep dragging them onto the video clip. If you double click on the video clip in the timeline, you can see the effects in the effect tab and you can turn them off or delete them as required. Again, I could spend hours playing around with all of these effects, but for the benefit of this tutorial, I've just shown you a few of my favorites. Let's move along to the next screen, which is elements. And here you'll find a whole bunch of emojis and graphics, various elements that you can add to make your project more interesting. If you hover over the thumbnail in the elements window, you get a preview of the element, and then you can just drag it onto your timeline by selecting it and dragging it right down. If you want to resize an element, double click it. Click on the transform drop down and then select scale and scale it to size. And finally, we're going to take a look at the split screen option. Go down to the basic tab and you'll get as many as 30 split screen variations to choose from. There's a basic left, right split screen. There's three screens in different configurations. There's a lot of really cool and interesting looks. So let's go and select split screen number 10 as example, as an example. I'll just drag it onto the timeline. And as soon as I do so, the media window will appear on the left hand side. And that's given me an indication that I need to simply drag my footage onto each one of those frames in the window. So just simply drag it across. And if you need to, you can go in and adjust the scale of each clip by clicking on the clip in the window and resizing. And you can also use your mouse to reposition the clip anywhere within that frame. That's all of the features that I wanted to go through today. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel as I'll be releasing more videos on the topic in the not too distant future. And if you do want to get your hands on Filmora, head over to the Wondershare website. Links in the description box below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.